Hello and welcome to Recyclist. It's May 12th, 2023. I'm your host, Eric Provost, and this is your weekly roundup of all the biggest news stories in the world of waste, gas, and energy presented by Diamond Scientific. First up, a recent survey from Protein Evolution and Wakefield Research yielded some very interesting results about America's perception of recycling. Among their key findings, they see that almost all Americans, 93% in fact, overestimate the percentage of plastic products that are recycled, with 35% of Americans mistakenly thinking it's half or more. More than four in five Americans believe they are at least somewhat knowledgeable about ways to reduce plastic waste in their day-to-day -day life, with 69% not recognizing that crude oil is used to produce new plastic products, when in fact the Center for International Environmental Law notes that over 99% of plastics is made from chemical source from fossil fuels. In addition to that, nearly a third of surveyed adults believe none of their clothes contain some of the raw materials used to manufacture plastic. A massive 98% of Americans overestimate the actual amount of discarded textiles that are recycled. More than three in four Americans believe it is very or extremely important that companies increase the amount of recycled materials they use to make clothing and apparel. Nearly two in three would be willing to pay more from clothes made from recycled material. And overall, they found that 89% of Americans believe that when it comes to reducing plastic waste, everyone has a role to play, including individuals. Up next, Doran Manufacturing, a leading manufacturer of tire pressure monitoring systems for truck fleets and off-road equipment, recently celebrated their 70th anniversary with a ribbon cutting to open their new facility. Dignitaries on hand included the mayor and city officials from the city of Blue Ash and trusted partners and service providers who were instrumental in the firm's move. In addition to their seventh decade in business, Doran is celebrating new ownership as the company was recently purchased by a group of current Doran executive leaders, including longtime president Jim Samaki, Lee Dimmis, vice president of business development, and David Robinson, a controller. Samaki said, quote, we are thrilled with the new facilities. Blue Ash is transportation friendly and offers many amenities that we didn't have previously, which are great for our current and future team members. Everyone from the city has been amazing, end quote. Moving up to New York, 17 years after Clarence voters threw out a plan to set up a townwide garbage district, the town is recycling the idea. The town board has agreed to hire a consultant to study the costs and benefits of negotiating an overall contract for garbage pickup in the town. Clarence is one of two towns in Erie County where property owners make their own contracts with waste haulers with no role for town government. Town voters in 2006 tossed to the curb a previous attempt to introduce a garbage district. Opponents say they didn't want the town involved in garbage pickup and raised concerns about rising costs for seniors and snowbirds. But Clarence supervisor Patrick Casillo said the average town homeowner would save money on garbage collection, eliminating disparities of hundreds of dollars a year among neighbors saying, quote, there's such a variance in pricing. A variance is how bulk pickup is being handled, that that's why I think the town has to look at this again, end quote. Moving to the federal level, the EPA Office of Resource Conservation and Recovery released the draft National Strategy to Prevent Plastic Pollution this past month. The release of the draft strategy accompanied the announcement of a White House Interagency Policy Committee on Plastic Pollution and Circular Economy. The new committee will coordinate federal efforts related to plastic pollution and related environmental justice and equity initiatives, according to a White House fact sheet. The draft strategy features three key objectives to address the production, consumption, and end-of-life stages of plastic products, including reducing pollution during plastic production, improving post-use material management, and preventing trash and micro and nanoplastics from entering waterways and remove escaped trash from the environment. 
Within these objectives, the draft strategy identifies voluntary actions that can be implemented in the U.S. with the goal of eliminating the release of plastic waste from land-based sources into the environment by 2040. Social Enterprise Plastic Bank recently celebrated stopping 80 million kilograms of plastic from reaching the ocean. That's equivalent to 4 billion plastic bottles. This milestone is achieved in the year when the company celebrates its 10th anniversary. As Plastic Bank enters its second decade, its mission to turn off the tap to ocean plastic evolves into a social recycling movement that enables people to become the change they seek in our world. Founder David Katz said, quote, Plastic pollution cannot be solved by impact contributions and the use of recycled materials alone. This quest has to be human-powered, where we strive for perpetual behavioral change and become mindful of our impact on the planet. Our 10th anniversary is the beginning of a new era where we become the humans of social recycling, humans who believe that the creation of a wasteless world starts with us. End quote. And lastly, in Colorado, officials are planning to boost the state's lagging recycling rate by launching free recycling for every household in the state starting in 2026. This recycling overhaul in the works with capacity assessment scheduled this year followed by system design will allow statewide recycling at no cost based on a list of materials that can be recycled according to officials at the Colorado Department of Public Health and the Environment. The department's materials management unit chief, Wolf Cray, on Thursday confirmed the push for free recycling statewide but declined to discuss it pending approval from agency information gatekeepers. It's unclear whether Colorado residents in cities such as Denver and local governments would still have to fund recycling after 2026. A nonprofit nationwide circular action alliance has been tasked with developing a convenient, cost effective system for Colorado and other states. A new state law requires makers of products sold in Colorado to create a producer responsibility organization and a system to cover the cost of recycling statewide. Nationwide, states' average portion of waste materials recycled hovers around 30%. In Colorado, state officials have estimated this remains roughly around 16%. The state law requires the government to set minimum recycling targets by 2030 and 2035. State officials have declared Coloradans will divert 45% of their waste to recycling before 2036. And that has been your Recyclist News Update for May 12th, 2023, presented by Diamond Scientific, an industry leader in gas analysis, instrumentation, and solutions. Make sure to visit them online at diamondsci.com, that's diamondsci.com, or call them at 321-223-7500. I've been your host, Eric Provost, and I'll see you back here next week for another Recyclist News Update.